Hey guys and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can prepare your models before you've even undercoated them to uh, help with the grim dark style. So such as something like this which is just flat, it's not got much interest over so we could paint some interest in there but if you really want to get that like 3D effect and take it to the next level in this video I'm going to be showing you some little techniques that we can do uh, during the prep beforehand um, so that later on uh, it's really going to give this some visual interest and this don't just apply to things like this you can uh, you know apply it to like your space marines such as this on the shoulders and stuff and we're going to go into a few more different techniques on uh, how to achieve some battle damage and just generally grim darken it up so we're going to be using a couple of different tools and techniques and like crackle paints and stuff like that to be able to achieve this look um the, this is the crackle paint i use there's no specific brand as long as it's a crackle paint they do come in different colors and stuff because we're going to be priming it anyway really don't matter what color uh, that you pick a couple of other tools that you're going to need these are not all essential these i'm just going to have a variety of different tools just to uh, show you the ones that you can do it with usually a file a drill a scalpel and then if you want to step things up a little bit, you could probably get something like this. I don't know the exact name of this. Um, it's a little bit like one of the uh, electric powered wow sticks. Uh, but this one was a really cheap one off Amazon. I will put a link to that in the description below. But this is a fantastic little tool. USB-C charges up. And it's got three different speeds on here. And it comes with, like your wow sticks normally only have a drill. But this one, it comes with a different selection of all different files and things like that you even get like some sort of aggressive like blade like this like a rotary blade so yeah you want to be really careful if you do step up to something like one of these uh, but this is what i use 90 percent of the time to do some filing but i'm going to be showing you how you can do certain things with this as well one of the first steps we're going to look at is obviously adding a couple of bullet holes i love bullet holes because you can get some nice little streaks and stuff and they are really simple to do so you can either use a handheld drill or again if you've got something like this just use that and just pick a spot and all we're going to do first is just add i'm going to add a couple on here just to show you so one we're not going to go too deep so it's just going to be like a, a surface hole so we're not going to go too deep for this one i say not too deep and i've just gone straight through it so this one can now be the deep one uh, and some, yeah, you want to get different variations of, of, like, how much that, you know, that bullet's impacted from there. <clears throat> and sometimes you can even go in on, like, a little angle, as so the bullet's, like, ricocheted. So you're just going to create, like, a little, little trench upwards. Now there's two options with this, like this one I've just done at bottom, it depends on how skilled you are, because obviously with this I can use it as like a little grinder to grind little areas out, you can do that, uh, and like, because you want to create like some little chips and stuff around it, you just don't want to leave it as one circle hole, because it doesn't always look like that, bullet holes, uh, but you can either do it with this, so like you've gone through it, uh, and you're just going to grind little holes away, or another technique I like to use, is get my scalpel uh, and again be very careful with this and I just do little circles and little angles just grinding little bits and scalping little bits off its surface but yeah if you do look at bullet impact holes they're not just perfect circles you know they do have these little like chips and dints and stuff like that inside it as well Obviously, because we've got the scalpel, one of the other things we can do is you can just literally go in and add scratches, surface scratches. Because when we do do as washers over the top of this, you are going to get some that, you know, go into this and it's going to make them stand out a little bit more. Again, you can go in and create like little stronger dints or scratches, depends on how deep you want to go with things like that. Uh, but these just add a little bit more visual interest to uh, the miniature gives it a bit of surface variation as well so finally you can get your file and you can, again because this is quite an aggressive file them little scratches and stuff we've added you can go in there and make like one side look a little bit more 
and battered and worn up. Again, obviously, I'm going to extreme on this just to show you some of the different techniques. I won't recommend doing this on every single panel. Uh, going all the way around it and just absolutely grinding it up too much. It is up to you, but I won't recommend doing it too much. Um, but again, if you've got something like this um, for the file point, I could have put something like this in and created some more unique files and scratches and stuff. Uh, but they're also really good for removing mold lines. Now, one last thing we're going to add to this, and you feel free to use like sand and stuff like that, but I love using crackle paints. It makes the paint look like it's chipped and worn. And if you want to get like a burnt effect, like, you know, like there's been some heat around here and it's paint's gone all black and stuff, it really helps to uh, do that as well. But I'm just going to add little bits here and there into corners. At the minute you can add little bits around your gun holes, like it's made the paint chip away. Uh, but when this dries, obviously, it, it it does what it says on the tin. It's a crackle paint. So it'll start to reveal, like, little cracks and stuff like that. And you can go as heavy and light as you want with this. And if you're adding it to something like this, you know, you might just do certain little areas, like in corners and a couple of kneecaps and on lower legs where battle damage would naturally accumulate. Don't go around literally painting it on all your miniature unless you're going for something that's super heavy on the grimdark style but again obviously i am overdoing it on this just to show you some of the different techniques um, but i won't normally or usually go as heavy as this as what i am on this little test piece now they usually say wait for crackle paint to dry on its own it's fine it can do that but if you do want to speed it up get yourself a beautiful or pinch uh, so one of the ladies is a hair dryers if you want to speed that process up a little bit. So when it dries, you're going to get something that looks a little bit like this. Now, given my crackle paint started to wear out a little bit, I've got to the last dreg, so it's not the best. Uh, but usually you do get like some bigger cracks and stuff like that. Uh, if you've got some, uh, then you, you, you'll you see what it sort of looks like once it gets going. But I'll put an image on the screen uh, as well so you can sort of see what one of these looks like when it's done. Uh, and now we're going to jump into, so at this point you just prime it and then you can paint your miniature as you normally would. Uh, but what we're going to do is we'll get it primed up, we'll go over it uh, with a colour and I'll show you how we can, you know, use these with our washes and stuff and make it look a little bit more grimdark. So now we've got it all base coated out, we've undercoated it and we've just base coated everything. I've just used an off white, like a bleach colour. Uh, and decayed metal uh, for the trim. The reason I've gone for this colour is because, you know, streaking effects and stuff show up really well uh, on this paint just for the purpose of this video. Yes, you can see like uh, darker patches and stuff here where uh, we put the crackle paint and stuff. This is not, I've not like purposely painted that a bit darker. That's just the light casting a shadow on it. But again, it does add to the overall effect. So the first thing that we're going to do with this is give it an all over wash with AK streak and grime. Um, so don't worry about where you're applying this, just literally splash it all, all over the miniature, no matter how heavy you go. Uh, because again, once it's dry, we are going to be wiping some of this off. And as you can see, all that initial work that we've originally done, the, uh, the enamel is running into those crevices and showing where some of those chips and scratches and stuff are on the miniature. Obviously we are going to be taking this off and it might come off in certain areas. Don't worry about that. You can always go back in and reapply a little bit more. But once you've done that, wait for it to dry. And then we can move into the phase where we remove it. Once it is dry, all we're going to do is get a cotton bud soaked in mineral spirits. And we're just going to use a downwards motion to start and remove some of that uh, streak and grime. I am purposely doing this in a way that it's going to leave some streaks on that on the uh, on the surface of that miniature. Uh, but again, don't be afraid to go over it. Now it is, as you can see, staining some of those deeper recesses. Um, and, it, and again, it just gives it. You can start to see all that battle damage, and that just saves us painting. All that battle damage in and you get that instant 3d effect again obviously we haven't gone over this with like a primer or any sort of protection of the top don't worry too much about it like down here where you can see where little bits have come off 
Because again, we can go in there and paint over it with some chips. Now give that a few minutes to dry and then we are ready for our next stage. Now what we're gonna do at this stage is a bit of uh, oil, use some oils, and we're just gonna get a tiny little couple of different shades which are similar to the, the colors that we've already got on. And I think it's called oil modulation, something along those lines, but all you do is get a bit of oil paint, get like little dots, add it and spot them all over the miniature. Um, as well, I've got like a color that's a little bit similar to the streak and grime that we've just used. I'm just going to add that in certain areas and then we're going to blend it all together just after this and then I've got like a uh, just a pure white. All these oil paints are Abtalon 502 and if you want to know which ones they are I shall put them in the description below. Uh, but just go around all your miniature. For the white sometimes if I want a bit more highlight in certain areas I'll go and pop that in like a hairy, an area 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 <laughs> where I want a few more highlights then all we're going to do is get something like this like a flat brush like a soft flat brush just dip it in mineral spirits it doesn't have to be saturated uh, in mineral spirits as though you're going to do like imagine dry brushing with the uh, with the with the mineral spirits and that's sort of how much you want on your brush and all we're going to do is use an up and down motion and start to blend all that together and what it's going to do is add a bit more dirt and grime and blend it all together and just give it a bit more uh, variation in color and streaks and stuff like that as you can see it does take away a little bit of that streak and grime but we're not too worried about that at this stage now because i'm wanting some more areas to be a bit more with like rust on them and stuff like that what we're going to do is sort of how i do it is it's just it's literally like we've just mentioned dry brushing but with oil paints and for this i've just got one really dark color which is something like dark rust and we're just going to start to feather that in at this point obviously you can see there's not much but just start dotting it on into the areas that you want and just pushing it around a little bit and again it will blend into some of those surface colors that we've already added but what we're doing is just trying to get as much surface like different colors and variation to our miniature as we can and again i know i said it at the beginning of this video you, you, if this were just one panel you might not go as crazy with it uh, but just for the purposes of this video, I am going a bit over the top with it. But you can see with this, like there, originally it was down here, and I've just managed to push it up just a little bit, just using mineral spirits, and that's the joy of using oils or enamels. You've got a lot of time to, to work with. And now it's just a case of waiting 352 years. Again, as we all know, oil paints like to take that long to dry. And uh, once that's done, we can move on to our next stage. Now, anywhere where you've got like really, maybe like big scratch, I'm not gonna do it with these because they're not too big. These are just gonna be like subtle dints, but you might have like a big scratch or something like that, or like here where the paint's chipped quite a bit and bullet holes, anywhere like that, that's where you wanna be adding uh, your rust streaks or up here where rust is sort of accumulating, you might do some rust off there, but for this, I'm just using Rust Streaks by AK Interactive. And how I tend to do my Rust Streaks is, I'll just get a little bit on. And again, like we did before with the oil paints, I'm just gonna dot in a little bit of rust where I want those streaks to start with. And you can drag them down a little bit if you want. Uh, but at this stage I'm not going to do that because like before when we got the brush and we started to wipe it downwards you can either use that technique or if you've got a little bit more control you can uh, just do it with the brush that you've just used dip it in mineral spirits and all we're going to do is just slowly start working that down into a streak and you want to try and get different lengths and sizes of these streaks just to you know add to that uh, variation in color 
and length and just if you look at like pictures of rust you'll get like a, a basic idea I don't know how that works you could use riser rust at this point but again it's it is extremely fast drying so you want to be careful with that we are going to add a little bit of this a little bit of that to this um, but again with that one you can streak with it and just use water to reactivate it but just be careful with um dirty downs that rust sorry as you know it does dry extremely quick and sometimes stains a little bit more than maybe what you'd what you'd be looking at so as we've just said in the next stage we are going to use a bit of dirty downs rust if you've never used this then uh just it's like magic in a bottle go out and grab some you do need to shake them really well i think i've gone over this before shake them really well so sediment tends to stick down in the bottom of the uh, the bottle but this is water soluble and all i'm going to do with this this is a technique that grimdark compendium used so all you do because it is fast drying get a little bit on your brush for the for the heavy hit areas and just wait for that to dry and it sort of comes off in in chunks um so you can apply that like like rust really would it's a bit more thicker in certain areas um, and the magic of this stuff i'm gonna add a little bit to like the bullet holes and stuff but this stuff is oh god it's like magic i'm not gonna add loads of it so again it is quite a strong effect but we do want some of it to be subtle and you can see the different variation here as it's drying a, a different colors and stuff that you do get and you can water this down and, and again if you do want to get a bit more variation into it or you want to take a little bit off and get your water and just dab it on and it will come come off but just again i didn't want to use it for streaks because i wanted a bit more of a subtle effect and like i said it does sometimes if you're not careful stain certain areas they have just fetched out a new one actually called um yellow rust which would be very interesting i can't wait to get hold of some of that uh, and, and try some next up we're going to add some little splats and things like that as it's been through some mud again i am going to reiterate the fact that i'm going way over top with the grim dark on this just to show you some of the techniques you can use and you can pick and choose which one of those techniques you you want to use and uh, do it as much as you like on your miniature so all i've got here is a brown contrast paint i think this is uh, wildwood I've just got a little bit of water on my brush so it comes off a little bit easier. And again, we're just going to use the splatter technique. You can use an airbrush for this. Again, there's not much control if you're doing it with this stage, but I just want to add a little bit and I've just got a little rod and I'm just flicking that onto some areas as all the mud and stuff has flicked up. At this stage as well, if you've got like, if it's round its feet, depending on what you're using for your for your base like i don't know some sort of like sand or stuff you can add a little bit of that to this as well which is really gonna enhance the look of it one final thing you can add to your miniature to get it more grim dark and more dusty looking is get some pigment powders um this is like a rust color. i think this is just called uh old rust they do come in all different colors and these are fantastic if you've you know you can add these to your bases and stuff and if you've got some like a, a gray one or a brown one again you could add that to this as well but just for some of the areas just want to make it look a little bit extra crusty uh, on that rust add into that grim darkness i recommend again using a dry brush not a dry brush is in one that's specifically for dry brushing just a brush that's dry to add on to that just so you don't get no it don't start turning into a uh, a paint but when it does dry if you do mix this with water you can actually go on and brush it off and end and you get an even nicer crustier look this one's even lighter and we're just going to get a little bit of that and add it to some areas and there we have it that's the uh the panel finished again you don't have to use all the techniques that i've just quickly shown in this i've just shown how they can all come together uh, but the main focus of this video is that beginning prep work and i'll put a couple of images up of other miniatures and stuff i've painted with that prep work just so you can see how it applies uh, in different colors and schemes and without using all the techniques 
that we've used in this video. So thanks again for watching, and if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would help me out massively spread the uh, love of this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to post it and share it with your friends, please do. And if you're not already, please remember to hit that subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. And if you want to see some more of the miniatures that I do paint, you can follow me on my Instagram at the Feral Painter. So thanks again for coming along, and I'll catch you in my next video.